Welcome to another edition of a Go Nose Podcast. I am your host, Gregory McCoy. This podcast is by a fan for fans. I am not a journalist. I am not a reporter. I am not a insider. I do not work for a website. The majority of my content comes from me and my opinion. Other information comes from the internet. Um, basically, we're about one or two episodes away from 450. It's a milestone. Um, you know, when, when, when I get to that 450th episode, I'll do like a little brief, you know, look back on some of the stuff that I said, but it's not going to be anything, you know, overly whatever. Um, You know, I do appreciate the people that listen on every outlet, Um, you know, um, it it means a lot that people take time out of their life to listen to what I have to say about you know, a football team that we all like and love. So thank you again. And uh, today I wanted to talk about the uh, um, skill positions or lack thereof. I really don't talk about the skill positions because I feel like the coaching staff has really did did a great job of addressing skill positions with the exception of tight end. I don't feel like we have another playmaker outside of Cam McDonald. I feel like if you're looking at the offense, that's probably the one position where, you know, going into the uh, offseason and going into the uh, transfer portal process that they did not address. Um, But, I mean, they got like 900 tight ends on the roster, so – you know, I figure out of those guys, they'll find another guy that can play opposite of Cam McDonald. If But they, from what I seen last season, very rarely did they run a lot of two tight end stuff. They didn't do a lot of that. You know, most of their stuff was spread um, and just, you know, spread the defense out and run, try to run the football. Um, And we'll see what happens this year. Um, I feel like I wish uh, uh, Jay Sean Corbin would have stayed another season. I think that would have helped his stock tremendously. Um, But he did what he had to do. He, He felt like he needed to go pro and, Blah, 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 whatever. Um, I think we got a good stable of running backs, a good stable of wide receivers. And, you know, I'm not – early on in the podcast, I, I used to break down players and do all that stuff. And I still might do that, but I, I'm I'm just focused on the glaring eyesore – the elephant in the room, whatever you want to call it, and that's the offensive line. None of that other stuff means anything if you can't block. The offensive line is the heartbeat. And just like any human walking this planet, if your heart ain't working, you probably ain't living. And that's the same thing with the offense. If your heart isn't working, you're probably not going to be winning games. And for the last six or seven seasons, we've sucked in terms of the standard that this program, quote unquote, is holding itself to. Um, You know, boosters, fans, coaches, players, you all have to be invested in this 100 percent. You can't. And I, I, a lot of people withdrew themselves when they hired Willie Taggart, a black coach. And I, I think they really withdrew themselves because he was a black coach. Let's just call it what it is. They didn't want Willie Taggart there. And I'm not going to say I didn't want him there, but he should have stayed at Oregon. A, a, a organization that's that fully 
invest in football. Okay, and he would probably be a lot better off today. Okay, because Florida State has a reputation of being cheap. It's it's 2022 and you still haven't built the football only facility yet. Eight years after Jimbo asked you for it, asked you to build it, you still haven't built it yet. And other teams in your conference have surpassed you in terms of facilities. So you can only live on brand name recognition for so long. Because these newer generation um, players, they, they're not going to remember Jameis Winston winning a national championship. You're, you are nine damn near nine years removed you know <laughs> i mean nine you're 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 nine years removed or uh, eight years you're eight years removed from winning that national championship basically a decade so in the next three to five years a lot of kids ain't gonna remember that you know they're just not you know, they they were probably just in the beginning stages of, of football and watching football on TV. Because I really I got into college football when I in when I was like eight. Is when I really started paying attention to the game. So um it, it you might want to start winning again. Um but Florida State has a lot of work to do in terms of winning Florida, the state of Florida back as far as recruiting. Um, nothing scares me more than, you know, going into a season and just hoping for a good season. That That's just... You know, when you're an Alabama fan or you're an Ohio State fan or a Clemson fan um, right now, you know pretty much you're going to win, you know, 10 games, 11 games. You're going to be in title contention. And even Georgia now. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to leave out Georgia. Um, and we used to have that, um, you know, I guess uh, – confidence that that uh luxury of saying hey i know we're gonna win at least 10 of our games this season you know from from 2012 to 2015 you know we had we got that confidence back and you know for whatever reason we lost it you know not not recruiting well at the offensive line a lot of misses at quarterback, and this is where we are today. So if Norvell can build a program back to just a semblance of what it was just, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, I'll, I'll be happy with that, man. Because in, in today's game, you have to spend money, I mean big money, to get to the national championship and all these coaches and mainly SEC coaches that deny it. I mean, it's obvious, man. You know what I'm saying? You, you got kids coming from California to the deep South. Come on. It's, it's obvious what's going on. Okay. I mean, why would I leave Los Angeles? <laughs> No humidity, all the luxuries and perks of being in Los Angeles to come to Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And no disrespect to that city or that state, but is there really a comparison to Los Angeles? So you you know somebody's getting paid. I, I don't have a problem with it, but it's just the denial. Like, like I'm stupid. Like, I don't see it. It's, I mean, come on. We see it. 
right? And I, I think NIL just, you know, pulled the curtain back even further, which, which again, I don't have a problem with it. I, I think these guys should get paid. I think these young men should get paid for their services. I, I think the university and the NCAA and the conferences, they they make they make billions. So if if a, a, a company or whoever wants to give a kid a couple hundred thousand to come to wherever university, great, phenomenal. But like I said earlier um, on previous podcasts, when you see a brother getting a little bit of a little bit of money, it's a problem. We can't let that happen. And that's that's where we are. And we gotta put up guardrails and we gotta we gotta rethink what we're doing and all this nonsense. But what I want to see Arch Manning's deal. Because I know he's not simp- he's not going to Texas for free. Per se. He's not just going there because it's Texas. I mean, he, he's getting paid. They're, there's probably, they're probably not going to disclose the terms, but come on. He got paid, bro. Not that he needs the money. Okay. His family is rich. Okay. But I'm assuming that he wants to be his own man. So number one recruit for 2023. Come on, you know he got paid, man. I don't have a problem with it. I don't. His talent, his work got him that money. And he should be compensated for that. But let's just, you know, when when another guy wants to leave uh, one university to go to another university because somebody wants to give him some money, it shouldn't be an issue. In any other walk of life, if you want to leave a situation for a better situation, you have that right to do that. So I just the 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 um the hypocrisy of college football is just crazy, man. Um I just think that uh you know money has always ruled college football and it's just it's it's more things out here that pulls the curtain back per se and shows the truth. And I love it. I love that you're getting to see this thing in 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 its purest form. That it's just billions and billions and billions being made in college football, and no, the the the, the people at the top don't want to share the money. I mean, it's it's like a a uh, microcosm of the real world, like. You got all the people at the top making money and they don't want anybody up under them getting anything. So I'll get off my soapbox on that, man. Florida State is real simple, man. And I've said it a million times on basically every show, every podcast. Everything comes down to the offensive line. Alex Atkins and Mike Norvell have to pick the right combination of players along that offensive line to be successful this season. And you you have to make a you have to make a serious jump this season. Like six and six, five and seven ain't gonna get it. I and I'll venture to say even now. I'm changing my stance. I don't think seven and four is, I mean, seven and five, excuse me. I don't think seven and five is going to be good enough either. You need to win at least eight games to, to really, and I think you need to be in every game. There can be no blowouts. There cannot be, there cannot be a game this season where we get 
blown off the field. We get embarrassed. It's unacceptable. Okay? If we lose, I say seven points or less would be acceptable. Jordan Travis has to to take a quantum leap. I think that he can if you give him time to throw. He's really skittish in the pocket. He needs to have more pocket presence and pocket patience. But he will take off and run in a, in a New York second. So we, we need more patience from him. And uh, I think the defense, again, for the one million time, I think the defense is going to be okay. I, I don't know about the corners. Um, I don't know who they're going to put out there. Um, but I think we got a good group. Um, they've, they've upgraded at linebacker. I think the defensive line, you know, it's going to be hard to replace Jermaine Johnson. I mean, he was a wrecking ball last season. Um, I don't see the kid from Albany state coming in and, you know, it's going to be hard to duplicate what Jermaine Johnson did. So, I don't think you can hold him to that standard. But hopefully he's putting in the work right now to try to maintain that standard. We want him to maintain the standard. But if he doesn't, you know, I'm not going to, you know, uh, talk bad about the kid because he couldn't meet you know, an all-world type season that Jermaine Johnson had. Um, but I want him to get to that level and surpass it. I want him to be better than Jermaine Johnson. Uh, Verse, that's his name, Verse. So um, I, I think the sky's the limit. I think if, if Norvell can tap into whatever he did last season, to get these guys to come out and play with a sense of urgency, I think we can get back to some sort of res respect within the conference and the nation. But eight and four, nine and three, to me, would show me as a fan that we are going places. We are going to be something special, and we're going to be some a team that you're going to have to deal with, you know, uh, in this conference, the ACC, going forward. And so um, I just I just, I just, just want that sense of urgency that Florida State used to play with. Even in the Bobby Bowden down years, they had that sense of urgency. Um, but... I mean that. I mean we don't even need to talk about the '90s because I mean we were, we were on our you know we were on our ish back then. So um, Mike Norvell has a lot of work to do. I think he's got it going in the right direction. He's gotten in the transfer portal. He's worked wonders. He's offset his misses in high school recruiting with transfer transfer portal guys. I don't think that's sustainable. I don't think you can build a program that way because you're basically, these are one or two year guys, most of them. And I just don't think you can depend on that year to year. You have to win the state of Florida in, in high school recruiting. Any, you know, any national championship that we won, we, we didn't do it without winning recruiting battles in the state of Florida. I mean, getting the guys, the top guys. And any time that there's been a national champion to come out of the state of Florida, that school was dominating recruiting in the state of Florida. Do you, do you, do you history check? Do you history check? Now, you know, Urban Meyer went all over the country to get guys, but he was getting the top guys in Florida too. Um, so that's really the path to get back to the national championship is recruiting in the state of Florida. You have to win the state of Florida. It's non-negotiable. 
The only thing I really say about recruiting is that Alex Atkins is doing a tremendous job. And he's a future head coach. Um, there's no doubt about it. I mean, it's just, it's just, does he want a power five job or is he going to take a group of five job? That's, that's really the only question. Um, for, I think he's going to hold out for a very good power five job. So, I mean, to do what he's done on the recruiting trail, um, based on the, um, on the field success that Florida or lack thereof, uh, he, he's going to be a tremendous head coach. So, um, I just, you know, I, I hope that he, uh, makes a great decision in terms of what program he goes to. Um, but I'm just, I'm really anxious to see, the the the, the um, starting five on the offense. I mean, we pretty much know who it's gonna be uh, on the interior. You know, if you're really trying to win, I mean, the dude from Wisconsin, Caden Lyles, Gibbons, and probably the kid from Charlotte are gonna be your interior. And uh, I would imagine that the dude from South Carolina is gonna be a starter. Uh, then I don't know who your other tackle's going to be. That's just my opinion. Now, you know, Armella might come in there and just, you know what I'm saying, throw the whole thing into a frenzy. Um, One of the freshmen might throw the whole thing into a frenzy. You don't know. But um, you, you, it's, it's really, to me, I don't really think the interior is going to be a big issue. Um. It's really the tackles. That's where we've really been exposed. And just the lack of uh, uh, brute force at the point of attack at the offensive line. I mean, we've, for for lack of a better phrase, we've been a finesse, soft offensive line for the last, even during the Jimbo years, we were a finesse offensive line. It was more about technique than brute force and um you know we got to change that because i mean he was running the west coast offense so you know there's it's a lot of quick hitting running plays you know it's 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 one two go you know what i'm saying it's there's no power it's technique just basically stand in front of the guy be a big body and that was it um, if you if you go back and look at some of the film from from when Jimbo first took over, even when he was the offensive coordinator. Um, so, you know. The the type of system that Norvell likes to run is a spread West Coast offense, in my opinion. It's a spread West Coast offense. A lot of dinking and dunking. Um, and he just likes to get playmakers in space. So with the up, with the upgrades of the wide at the wide receiver and the upgrades at running back, or I should say additions, we don't know if they're upgrades yet. It's going to be interesting to see, you know, can this offense really, uh, you know, put points up on the board. We're talking 35 or more. Um, Defensively, like I said many, many times, man, I just feel like the defense needs to be at the same level as last season or better. And, uh, you know, I just hope this guy verse is uh, all that. I hope he just comes in and takes the world by storm, man. And, uh, you know, I watched some of the Albany tape, but you, you got to keep that in perspective. Um, we don't know who the other defensive end is going to be. Um, you, you Big Coop, Big Coop and uh, Love are going to be your defensive tackles. Where Where's Briggs going to play? Where's McClendon going to play? 
Um, so you you got you got some pieces on defense. You know Tatum and Deloach are going to be your linebackers. I don't know if you throw Sam McCall into that star position. Um, it, it seemed like he would be a perfect fit for that position. So um, special teams were a disaster, and with the exception of the punting game. Uh, we were pretty good in the punt game. But, you know, pretty much every other aspect of special teams were, was a disaster. So we there's a lot of room for improvement. But, you know, if you can improve in those areas, I think you can you can win eight games at least. So. As always, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode. It's available on YouTube. It's available on all podcast platforms. As always, go Knowles.